Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be testing out this Vivor high pressure air compressor. I purchased this online to fill up my mini scuba tank. That's a two liter tank. I wanna see how long it's going to take using a 3000 PSI setting on this machine to fill up that tank. Now at first glance, it appears to be made extremely well. Everything you see here is included. These hoses for cooling, mini circulation pump. This is the part, you push it down and it pops off. This connects directly to the scuba tank or paintball gun cylinder. Inside here, there are these filters. You can see right here in this image. Just unscrew right here, pull it out, and you can replace them every few times that you fill up your cylinders. Included is a power cord, manual, a bunch of O-rings, as well as another connector. 120 volt, it is two stages. You can see there's cooling water that's going to be circulating around the head inside here to keep things nice and cool. And it's also air cooled, as you can see at the reverse side. There are two drain valves, one on this side right here, one on the opposite side. When you purchase this unit, you have to have the plug that's here removed. You're going to fill it with the correct oil. And you're going to look at the very bottom. There's a bullseye. You want the oil level to be right in line with the center of the red dot. And you can see that right here. This unit, you adjust the pressure using the knob on top. I have it set at 3000. I'm going to give you a close up right now and explain how this automatically shuts off. If you look very carefully at the gauge, you're going to see there's a little protrusion sticking out. There's also one on the needle that is set at 3000. This little one is going to move all the way up and over until it makes contact with the protrusion on the needle that you have the pressure set at. An electrical contact will be made turning off the pump. What I'm going to do now is connect all this up to show you how it's done. I'm going to have a pail of water for the pump and another pail of water for the scuba tank to keep it nice and cool as it's being filled. Okay, now before I get started filling that tank, let me explain why I took the other video down. Now I purchased this a few months back, only got to use it one time. It was advertised for paintball, scuba, as well as firefighting to fill up the tanks so you could breathe. And I tried it one time and I did not notice any unusual odors in the air in my tank. I also did not notice any oily residues, none of that stuff. The second time is when I made the video, which was taken down. I filled it up, everything was fine, and I had a bunch of viewers saying that, you know, the air quality is not good. So I said, let me take a look at it this time. The second time, when I pushed the button on the regulator to release the air pressure, I did smell a strong odor of compressor oil. And it actually makes sense because there's a piston with rings right in contact with the air inside this compressor, which is going into that tank. So you definitely don't want to be breathing that in. You always want to push that button on your regulator first, take a whiff of the air, make sure it smells okay before you inhale that air. The next thing I did after that video I held that button down on the regulator to discharge the entire cylinder, which was 3,150 PSI. I then took a cotton swab, went into the mouthpiece, moved it all the way around, and just to check if there was any kind of an oily residue that made it into the tank, and I could tell you there was zero residue on that mouthpiece, which is good. So basically the only issue was the odor from the oil was finding its way into the tank. So what I want to do now is explain to you what you have to do if you intend on breathing the air. If you're not going to breathe the air, if it's going to be for an air rifle, paintball gun, something like that, then you don't have to do anything. You can use regular ISO 46 oil, but if you are going to be breathing it, let me show you what you have to do. The first thing is the oil that's in the compressor, if you filled it up already, you're going to have to let this run, just tighten everything down, leave the end open, let it run, because you want to make this heat up for about 15 minutes, and then you're going to remove the bolt and drain all the oil out of the compressor. 
Once it's fully drained, you're going to have to purchase this oil here. Just so you know, it is not cheap. It is food grade oil, FDA approved, and designed for air breathing compressors. I have a visitor right now, Patches. So this one here is Nuvair 455, premium style food grade breathing air compressor fluid. Now a quart of this is not cheap. You're looking at like $32 a quart and when you pay for shipping because it's oil, you have to pay another $15, $20. So you're looking anywhere between $40 and $50 for a quart. The good thing is you can fill this up three times. And this is designed to last a very long time. So you're gonna drain the oil out, refill it to that dot, turn it on again, let it run for about 15, 20 minutes, and then you're gonna drain it again and throw that oil away, absorb it in cat litter or something else before you throw it in the trash. The third time, you're going to fill it back up. So you're gonna drain it, you're gonna fill it, you're gonna drain it, and then on the third time, you're gonna fill it up and you're going to be good to go. This oil, when you smell it, has virtually no odor. The other one I was using is very strong. So do this. The next thing you're going to have to do, which is also very important, this filter worked at keeping any oily residue out, but there was some water inside this filter, the little cotton one you see right here. When I squeezed it, it did retain some water, so I know some of it made it out. So you want to get rid of this and you also want to have a really good multiple stage filter that's going to get rid of not only the moisture coming from the compressor, but you also want to absorb any odors that may be coming from the compressor while it's in operation. You want to have that air into the tank as clean as possible. So what you're going to have to do, remove this from the line, you unscrew this, take it off, there's going to be the cable right here connects to this and then you're going to have to put this one you see right here this one is a monster very well made and I'm going to go inside right now and show you exactly how this is arranged on the inside so you can have a better understanding of how it's going to filter the air right here is the multi-stage filter it's a seven millimeter thick wall tube made of aluminum, female thread both ends. You have these very thick caps that are threaded and there's O-rings. Now the air is going to enter on one end from the compressor and that's going to be this end with this fitting. So the air goes in. The first thing you want to do is filter that air. And right over here, that's what's inside this end. It goes in here first. You can actually see one I think is in there. Yep, right there. You push that in, it's a tight fit. So the air is gonna go through here first. But before it goes through here, there's actually this felt filter that goes on the very end. So the felt filter, then this dense polypropylene. And on the other side of that, you're going to pour into the tube these desiccant beads. So this is going to absorb any moisture in that line coming from the compressor. And they look like what you see right here. They look like they're made out of maybe clay. They're very hard. I cracked one open and it's just not much to it. It's all the same throughout. They change color when they get wet. They become dark. You're going to take this, pour it inside the tube. So this end here already has the filter pushed in. Put this upright. Take a little funnel, put that right there. And just very carefully pour that in. That was the amount that was in there when I received the filter. They give you plenty extra in the event it does get wet, so you can swap it out. Now the next thing you're going to do is take this felt filter, about an eighth of an inch thick, maybe three millimeter. You're going to push it straight down on top of those beads. 
With that filter in position, push down firmly. The next thing you're going to do is take some activated charcoal. It's small granules, it appears to be crushed. Not sure if it's made from coconut shells, but you're going to dump that in on top of the filter because once the moisture, if there's any, is removed from the compressor's air, the next thing you want to do is remove any odors that may be remaining from the oil in the compressor. Now the oil I'm using now is extremely mild. There's very, very little odor, if any. So this is going to grab any residual odor that's in that air before it goes into your tank. Take the activated carbon, pour that in next. This is the amount that was in there. Okay. Take another one of these felt filters. Place that on top. Push it down. So right now, nothing's moving. Everything is tight. And you want to remember, so right now, this is going to be the exit. So I want to make sure this one goes on. O-ring right here. Place a little bit of silicone grease on here every so often. Make sure this is all clean. Then you can see it goes straight down to there. This goes right on the tank. This is the other end. Make sure it's to the bottom of the threads. They give you plenty of these long filters when they get shot. Here's the filter at the other end, the long one, where the air enters. Just push that in. Now take this. This is the inlet. And thread that on. So let's take this back outside, connect it up, and see how long it takes to fill up that tank using the air compressor. Let me get that tank out of that jacket, put it into a pail of water, five gallons, just to keep it nice and cool as it's being filled. I'm also gonna put a pail right here and show you how to connect up this circulation pump to ensure this stays nice and cool during the test. You can see the valve is open. This high pressure tube is actually made in Germany. It's pretty good quality and this hose appears to be good quality. If you'd like to know where I purchased these, I will place links for the scuba kit as well as the compressor in the video description area. So right here you can see it's at zero at the red area. And when I push here, nothing. So completely empty. What I'm going to do is place a timer right next to this when it's ready. See how long it takes to go from zero to 3000 PSI for a two liter tank. Okay, so now there's water here. Tank is inside the five gallon bucket. Water is just below that neck of the tank. Take this right here. Suction cups. Push it down good. Take this one. That's the water going back. Good. You want to make sure that these are open before you start up the compressor. Both sides, there's a valve. Open. This is set for 3000 PSI the needle. Going to get the pump, plug that in first. Good flow. Now I'm going to take this, connect it to the scuba tank. Make sure these are on tight on each end. The O-rings must be fully seated. We'll leave it just like that. It's in a relaxed state. Okay, everything is now ready to go. You can see the pressure is at zero PSI in that tank. Everything is connected up. I'm gonna turn on the compressor and as soon as I tighten both valves, push start.
25 minutes and 30 seconds. That's actually about three and a half, four minutes faster than when I made the previous video. So now the next thing to do, off, allow the water to keep running. I'm going to bleed this side first. takes a little longer because this is all compressed and very little moisture coming out a little bit I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna take a look at the inside to see what these pellets look like make sure there's no unusual odors nope night and day compared to what it was before and now. Nice and dry, no moisture in there. That's a good thing. All right, so that's nice and dry. Now let's take a look at those moisture absorbing beads. I'm going to reach in and grab that cotton. That's good there. All right. Everything is dry. Take a look down here. Maybe a little bit of moisture here, but it never made it into that desiccant area. A little bit of moisture there I could feel, very little. And a little bit of residue there. Not much after 20 minutes. In case you're wondering what this looks like out of the tube, this is the inlet. Over here would be your desiccant beads. So the felt pad, pretty clean on the opposite side, just a little bit of bleed through. Nothing here. What you're looking at there and there is me reaching in with this to grab it and pull it out. There is some moisture all over here. See it? So there is moisture from the compressor. Not a lot. It's only to this point here. This end is completely dry. That's why the desiccant beads never got wet. So you could probably use this three times to fill the tank before this would become saturated enough to even get to the desiccant beads. So maybe once a day if you're using the compressor, take this out, get rid of it, and swap it out with a new one. So as long as you use this filter system and keep an eye on the desiccant beads as well as the activated charcoal, you should have pretty clean air in your tank if you intend on breathing it. And guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.